Yadu from the south side of India and welcome to Machan vs. the World podcast. I've been lucky enough to be studying at a university in Moscow with students from across the world. I want to use this opportunity to learn more about the different peoples through their stories. Join me on this journey across the world through stories told by the people that have lived them. With me, you're Machan. That means bro in South Indian languages. I hope you learned something new with me today. Hello everybody. We are back in South America and I'm not trying to speak Spanish this time. That means we are in a really unique country which a lot of people don't know about. It's called Guyana and with me is Rihanna from Guyana. <laughs> Rhymes. Rhymes. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. But how you been, Rihanna? I've been good actually. I've been great. I'm super grateful for the break that we've been given. Yeah. Because university is obviously challenging, so it's good to have some time off. Yeah. So for people who don't know, it's ten days of mini vacation in Russia at this point of yeah. time, right? It's like the World War Day of Victory, the day of Russia won the World War Two, Orthodox Easter, May Day. A lot of things just came together, and Putin decided ten days take a break, people, and we are grateful. Yeah, we're one for that. Yeah. <laughs> So Rihanna is a student of psychology, first year, and she's kind of like me. We, are, we both did Padfak one year, and now we are struggling through the first year of learning yeah. things in Russian. So how has it been? How is psychology in Russia, Rihanna? So, I mean, despite the language barrier, it's been great. Um, everything has been super fascinating to learn about, so I can't complain. You can't complain? Yeah. Yeah. So if anyone had any pre like um, preconceptions that Rihanna would be speaking with a Spanish accent, she's not. Because Guyana is a country, the only country in South America which speaks English. Yeah. Am I correct? Yes, that's true. And Guyana is like this, how do you say, really different and unique country in South America which people don't know about. And today we are going to explore that, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> okay, so... Another another facet that I need to say is that Rihanna looks Indian as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually thought you were Sri Lankan mm-hmm. the first time I saw you because, uh, I don't know, you look Indian. Yeah, She's, that's, I always get that. Everybody's yeah. like, you're from India. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And then they go on to list like, oh, Bangladesh. I'm like, no, Nepal. I'm like, no, Sri Lanka. <laughs> and they just keep listing. <laughs> did, that, that's, did anyone, you know, got it right the first time? That never. You're from, ever, never, right? Ever. Do anyone actually guess after a few wrong replies that No, you're... they would never think that I'm from the South, South America. They're always like, oh my God, really? Exactly. Dude, <laughs> that's you so... speak Spanish? Yeah. Yeah, so that's always do you, thing. Do you speak Spanish? Um, well, I took Spanish in high school, but it's uh-huh. not that good. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, so let's get into it. Where are you from in Ghana? So Ghana is divided into 10 administrative regions. Mm-hmm. So region four is where the capital is located. Mm-hmm. So I went to high school there. I spent a lot of time there, but I grew up in region nine, which is like the hinterland so, region. Of so you Ghana. don't you don't have names for your region? You just we, nine, we do have names oh, okay. for them, but like they're easier to say region one, region ah, two. Okay. So yeah, so like region nine is known as Upper Takitu, Upper Esiquibo. Wow. Yeah, okay, region nine, region 9 is much better. <laughs> yeah, so that's like the hinterland region of Guyana. It's uh-huh. where a lot of indigenous communities are. The, they're called Amerindians? Yes, Amerindians. Okay. That's what we call them. So that's where I grew up. Oh, okay. So. And if you could like locate Guyana on a map, mm-hmm. who be your neighbors in South America? So we have three neighbors. So Venezuela on the left, mm-hmm. Suriname on the right, and mm-hmm. then on south, it's Brazil. South Brazil. So there's a, so and at the Atlantic Ocean on top of you. Yeah. Okay. So that puts you in clocks close proximity to the Caribbean. Yeah, it does. And what makes so from my research, I there's a lot of things which make Guyana unique. But from mm-hmm. your perspective as a Guyanese person, what mm-hmm. makes Guyana unique? I think I mean besides the fact that we're the only English speaking country in the entire South America, we also we're not really like have like the south american culture Mm -hmm. like we're not really familiar with it that much like because we're so caribbean we're so tied to the caribbean we don't have that like south american culture Uh, okay so you have to explain to me what's the major difference between caribbean and south american cultures so like um because caribbean culture is like it's much more i find it i mean like entire south america culture is like vibrant Mm -hmm. but because caribbean culture is like at least for the english-speaking caribbean obviously because you speak english but we have like our own language that we speak so like we call it like 
like Jamaicans they have patois mm-hmm. or I think that's how you say it but like Guyanese we have Creole but like if a Jamaican person speaks we understand and if we speak they kind of understand us as well okay so like the rest of South America they won't understand us completely because you know they even, speak Spanish yeah they speak Spanish and then you have like Brazilians speak Portuguese, Portuguese. And, stuff. and even if they did speak English they still won't understand us because right. that's just something the Caribbean people have in common Okay, so a normal English speaker can't understand Creole, but I yeah. do listen to like reggae music and I can get some part of it, yeah. but mostly related to marijuana. Yeah. But other than that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super complicated sometimes. Really? Yeah. Um, and like even me, because like, even though Ghana is an English speaking country, a lot of people in Ghana don't speak standard English, like formal English. They speak Guyanese, Creolese. Okay. So like, if you go to like some parts, like the countryside of Ghana, and you hear, listen to somebody speak, you probably won't understand them. Like, I have a hard time understanding them as well. So, oh. yeah, so, it can get pretty bad. So do the Amerindians, the native people, also speak English well, or a Creole? Well, they them? speak, they have their own languages, actually, their own indigenous languages. But they speak English, but, like, their Creole can differ between people. Oh. So, like, like Indian people, they have a way thicker accent. In Guyana, yeah, okay. With the with the Creolese, but like Armenians, they won't really like have that similar accent because I because I grew up in an indigenous community, so a lot of words that like people on the coast of Guyana they would know, uh-huh. I won't know. Oh. So like for example, um, like spinach, you know the word spinach. Yeah. So like in Guyana we say kalu. Kalu. Kalu, yeah. Okay. But like, in like where I'm from, that's what we call a kalu, right? In Region Nine. Uh-huh. But like people on the coast, like especially in the countryside, they say baji. Baji, dude, that's that's kind of Indian, isn't it? Yeah, Baji, it is. that's Baji. like the Indian, how do you say, it? the snack, Baji. Yeah, well, that's what we call like the spinach kind really? of thing. So also, same thing with alu, uh-huh. which is potato. Potato. Well, I didn't know that growing up because I grew up in indigenous communities. Oh, what do you guys call it, alu? Well, we do, I say potato because that's how my parents raised me to say potato until I moved to live with my grandparents, uh-huh. like in region four. And she was like, oh, do you want alu for dinner? And I'm like... What's an alu? What's, what's that? <laughs> Yo, so yeah that's crazy because if i'm an indian mm-hmm. and if i go to guyana i mm-hmm. would understand those words yeah. better than a person who actually lives in guyana yeah. but in a different region yeah Dude, you would that, there's a lot of there's a lot of history and we will get into mm-hmm. that so could you t- t- tell me more about the creole could you, could you talk in creole i'll try to understand i'll try honestly, to pause what you're trying to say honestly my creole is not a good because i was raised to speak standard english so mm-hmm. like if i say something Creole, my my parents would always be like, "Is that how you're supposed to say it?" Oh, <laughs> so, really? Yeah. So like, uh, for example, we say like, "The water bottle is right there." Mm-hmm. So like in Creole, it'd be like, "Um, the bottle that I write on there." What? <laughs> <laughs> I just got bottle from that. Yeah. I just got bottle. So from the bottle that, that I write on there, which me literally translates, so the bottle is right there. Okay. Could you say something in Creole? Then I'll try to pass it. Okay. Let me let me think. Um. She does so far away. She is so far away. Yeah. Something more complex. Okay, let me think. Oh, this is kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your entire childhood don't talk like that. That's been the... Um, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah. Wamda. Who am I? Wamda. Wamda. Wamda, Wamda. What day? It's like, what's happening? Wamda. Yeah, Wamda. <laughs> okay, and can you compare it to a Creole of, let's say, Jamaica? Well, <laughs> that's, well, because I don't really, um, like, know, like, oh. all, like, Jamaican, like, slang or whatever, mm-hmm. so, but I know it's very different because they have that accent, so you can literally yeah, tell man. a, Jam- yeah, yeah, like, you can tell thing. a Jamaican person from a Guyanese person, so. Ah, yeah. just from the accent. Yeah. God. <laughs> so, if you were to look at the Creole, from your examples, mm-hmm. there's English involved. Yeah. There's Hindi or some other North yeah, it, Indian language. It does language have like an, an Indian influence. Influence. Yeah. Too. What other languages influence the Creole as far as you know? Um, I think probably African culture as well because mm-hmm. we do have Africans in Ghana, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I think some of their like whatever they used before in their other languages mm-hmm. influenced our Creole as well. I'm not quite sure what those words are. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> so because like, you know, it's been like passed down from generation yeah. to generation, so obviously you get used to it, so you don't really know what's like, would be the influence. Wow. Yeah. And, and how difficult is it, do you think is it for an English speaking person to learn a Creole language? Honestly, um... It's not, it's not very difficult. Yeah, it won't be that difficult because it really depends on where in Ghana you would be. So like, mm. let's say you're in the capital, like, it's easier to catch on because 
more like more people would speak like kind of standard english and mm. like mix it in but right. like if you go to the countryside it gets much more complex because like standard yeah. english is just like kind of thrown out the window so. <laughs> well but you can communicate with almost everyone in Guyana using english or yeah. creole there isn't like a separate language that like we have in india no right so that leads me to the next question so your neighbors are guyana suriname and french guyana so you have another country with the same name that you share well that would be suriname french guyana yeah. suriname was known as dutch guyana dutch guyana and so you got like three guyanas yeah over here. we're three guyanas and we were british guyana so was it like the colonialists kind of carved up a big landmass called Guyana yeah. and decided, okay, we're going to teach these people English, we're going to teach these people Dutch, and we're going to teach these people Well, French. we were actually first colonized by the Dutch, I believe, mm-hmm. and then the British came over and they, you know, they won, so ah, okay. they got us, okay. so the Dutch had to move o- move over to Suriname. Ah. Yeah. And how, how, how do you guys, how's the relationship between you guys between all these three Guyanas? What's the, what's, the what's the relationship? I mean, well, how do you guys see them? Do you guys see them as like one people who have been divided colonially? Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think it would apply to your case because most of the people came from other places yeah. to Guyana. But in terms of an Amerindian perspective, mm-hmm. would they see it as, okay, somebody drew borders in Guyana and they mm-hmm. were in the three parts. But in essence, we are kind of one people. Is well, there... I guess we could say that we are one. Like Suriname, I've I've never been to French Guiana. I've never been to Suriname, but I do know that Suriname they have similar people mm-hmm. as us, and they they speak English as well. But mm. they have you know the Dutch influence too. Mm. But um, I'm not sure about French Guiana, but I'm pretty sure they do have the same kind of people, but like just more French. <laughs> <laughs> so, just but, more French. Yeah, but yeah, I'm pretty sure we're basically all the same we just have the different languages that separates us and are, do they also consider them to be more caribbean than south american the suriname um, and well french i Guyana. don't think french Guiana considers themselves much of the part of the caribbean community hmm. maybe like french caribbean okay but like french caribbean is not like totally popular because we don't have a lot of french caribbean speaking countries i think could you give an example haiti yeah haiti is i i can think of the only other yeah. one i'm probably like Saint, Saint Martin. Saint Martin. I think yeah. Saint Martin speaks French or something. But yeah, um, Suriname. We they are considered part of the Caribbean as well because we are culturally tied. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's interesting. And then let's move on to the story of how did you guys get here? How did Indian people get to a corner of South America? Great. Which, so we're gonna give a history lesson. We're gonna today. give a history <laughs> yeah. lesson, which most Indian people don't know. Yeah. So. If I ask my friend group, do you mm-hmm. know where Guyana is? They would be like. Ania. Ania means elephant in our language. Yeah. Like, what? Like, there's a country like that? Well, Guyana is actually an Amerindian word and it oh. means land of many waters because of... we have so many rivers and oh. creeks and stuff like that. So, okay. I yeah. just read that if you want to go to the western side of your country, there are no roads, but you need to take the river systems to transfer to that yeah. part. I mean, the ones which are close to Venezuela. Yeah, that's true. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. So how did you get here? What's your story? How did so, an Indian girl end up in Guyana? So, um, well, after slavery was abolished, when they brought Africans to the Caribbean, um, they needed more people to work on the sugar plantations. So the British took people from India, mm-hmm. which, like, I think Calcutta specifically, right. that area. So they brought them to Guyana to work on the sugar plantations. But because they told them they would have been paid and stuff like that they would be like you know they would be given like food and clothing and they would also be they'll be able to like get gold because Ghana is also known as El Dorado dude for real El, El Dorado yeah. is like this legend yeah. of like the Spanish are looking for it, the Portuguese yeah. are looking for it, this city of gold where that's why the entire reason for like kind of colonizing South America yeah. that legend so, so, so yeah. Guyana was El Dorado well, as, per, as per the legend well I won't say we were. We are El Dorado. We just have been nicknamed the land of El Dorado. And because we do have gold indeed. Right. But like we don't have the city of gold. So, okay. So yeah. But so they told the Indians that they would be given all these things. So when they brought them, they brought them on two ships. The first um, batch of Indians arrived on May 5th, which is soon. Uh-huh. So it's going to be Indian Arrival Day again. It's oh, you have a day for that? Yeah. Okay. Indian Arrival Day. So I think like 1835 or 1837 or something uh-huh. like that. I think. Or like 1838, I believe. I think, yeah. I think it's... You, you, you want to check that? <laughs> I think it's 1838. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. um, Yeah, and 
when they brought when they brought them to Canada, they were treated very poorly. Mm-hmm. Like they were put to live in these houses called logies or logies. They're like okay. really small houses and they're packed together. And so stuff. was it just one ship? There were two ships. Um, one was called the Whitby, and the other one was called the Hesperus. Okay. So, yeah. so so do you know which route they took? Did they go through the Pacific or through the Atlantic? Um. I'm not too sure, you know. I'm pretty sure it's through the Atlantic. Atlantic, yeah. One. Okay. So yeah, so they that's how Indians ended up in Ghana, and we're so actually that's two ships. That's... Well, that was the first batch. Oh, okay. So because Indians were brought not only to Ghana to Trinidad and Tobago, mm-hmm. Jamaica, um, Suriname, mm-hmm. Ghana received the most Indians in the Caribbean. Okay. So our population is like forty percent Indians. Because you guys had the biggest plantation at that point of time. Um, well, be. I think Guyana and like South America, we're like the third or the, like the second smallest country, I believe. I think I think it's the third smallest country in South America, but like in the Caribbean, we're relatively big. big yeah. So I believe that's probably why. Ah, okay. And the British boat, the British boat you guys in, how yeah. long was this trade going on? Uh, for a really long time, actually, because even after they brought the Indians and the Indians kind of like... Like, you know, eventually, because I think it was a five-year contract. So I was a believer, yeah, they came on like a contract. It was like a five-year contract. And then they're like, oh, after the five years up, you can choose to stay or go back. But like, I think when five years up, that really wasn't the case. Right. So a lot of people started to like rebel. Right. Like there were like riots and, you know, those kind of things. And then they eventually had to bring in Chinese and Portuguese people to work on those sugar plantations. Portuguese people. So they bought Europeans to work? Yeah, but it's like in Ghana, we consider them like two different people because like when we say Europeans, we like we know that they're the British, the colonizers. Okay. But and Portuguese people were brought as indentured immigrants, like laborers, so we consider them like us. Oh. So yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Could you explain what indentured means? Well, from, uh, from your perspective. There's an indentured perspective to that too. I'll explain after that. Yeah. But from your perspective. Like indentured um, laborers for us was like um, just people that came on like the contracts to work on the sugar plantations and then eventually they would be freed. Mm. That, that was, yeah. And were they forced to sign the contract or they were signed by free No, they were like, they like a lot of them voluntarily signed up for it because they were like, you know, tricked into thinking they would be given this luxurious life in Ghana. Right. So they were tricked, basically. Right. From an Indian perspective, indentured contracts mm-hmm. are a very coercive system in which, like you said, when slavery ended and the mm-hmm. British needed very cheap labor, yeah. what they did was, if you were a farmer, mm-hmm. they would put insanely high taxes on your lands mm-hmm. where you would have to surrender maybe, let's say, 60 to 80% of your produce. To make that produce... You don't have capital, so you have to take a loan from mm-hmm. the zamindar, which is like the landowner. And you take the loan, you give the taxes to the British, mm-hmm. and you don't have enough money to give back, to pay back the loan plus mm-hmm. the interest. At that point of time, you are, what's that word, In, insolvent or defaulted mm-hmm. on your loan. And you don't have a particular choice other than to sign a contract saying, mm-hmm. I'm going to work for X amount of years to repay this loan. Yeah, And that contract is called an indentured contract Mm -hmm. so we consider that contract to be a coercive force because if you put such a high tax on land which can only produce so much you it's almost certain that that person won't be able to repay that loan and they will become an indentured labor so from an indian from how we look at it yeah even though they in quotes voluntarily signed those contracts it was coercively forced to sign it so we see it as a form of slavery, but mm. with more steps, yeah. <laughs> to put it quite crudely. That's but, kind of a debate too, like within the Caribbean community with Indians, because the like there's always like this um, Africans against Indians that type of racism with among us. Among, even now, yeah, even now it's because like that's how the British set us up against each other mm. because they knew if we work together, we would overthrow them so they would spread lies like they go to to africans and be like the indians have diseases Mm -hmm. you know they do this stay away from them and they tell they told the same thing to the indians Mm -hmm. about the africans so eventually that was passed on from generation to generation and that racism still exists right yeah that's interesting so let's go back to the history Mm -hmm. so 1835 the first batch of indians 1838 1838 yeah because slavery ended august 1st in, of in it, Ghana, 1838. Ah, okay. I believe, yeah. 
So, so does that mean in before the Indians came, it was mainly populated by Amerindians and slaves brought from Africa? Yeah. And then the Indians were brought in. Mm-hmm. How did like the British allocate land and allocate resources for the Indians and the Africans? Was it like ghettoized where one part of this town is exclusively African? Like you told. Well, like in... each plantation was like um. Each plantation was like um, nicknamed, however they named it by, was like some plantations are French influenced mm-hmm. because we were under French rule as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we went through the Dutch, the French and the English. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My city in India went through the Dutch, the Portuguese and the English. Yeah, so, so I know that feeling. So we do have, you know, all, so we do have names that are influenced by the French, the Dutch and the English as well. Mm-hmm. But like, I think when they, so when they brought Indians to Guyana, like some Africans, they already had plantations that were like just theirs, basically. So they owned it. Well, oh, were... I think I believe after slavery was abolished, some of them could have been able to buy their own right. like, plantations, or whatever. Right. But it wasn't very common because you know, obviously they weren't given that type of privilege or whatever. Right. It's really hard to do that. But um, yeah, the, right now in Ghana, like you can name a community and you'd be like, oh, that's an Indian community. How? Because you just know because um different like parts of Ghana like. It's heavily populated by Indians and be heavily heavily populated by Africans just by knowing the name of the community. Like listening to the town name, you mean? Not the town name. You just like it's just because you know the community is just like populated by th- this type of race. Like you just you just know because that's how it's been like given to them. Traditionally, it's been like yeah. that. And did the British decide who s- settles where? Or um, I think probably that's why. So it's just been like passed on. And never is, really changed. And that is the kind of, so let's take the example of Georgetown, your capital, the big city. Is yeah. there that kind of racially segregated Well, Georgetown is super mixed people, like right. all types of people. So I won't really say um, like it's segregated, mm-hmm. but yeah. But like if you go like different parts, like you travel more outside of Georgetown, like you go up to the countryside, super like Indian populated wow. and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that. That's quite interesting, isn't it? And this was going on, mm-hmm. the indentured labor thing. And and it reached a point where the huge proportion of the population were Indian yeah. labor. The ch- change the entire demographic. So what were the Amerindians doing during this time? Were they like isolated from all this uh, well, because, plantation yeah, work? Most everything? of the plantations are found on the coast of Guyana. Mm-hmm. So like Amerindians... You won't really find them on the coast. They're more in like deeper parts of Ghana, it's like where I'm from, exam- mm-hmm. for example. So they were like away from all of that. They uh. were like just doing their own thing. But I do believe they were treated badly as well because if they were captured, they were beaten, some were killed, you know, because they were trying to protect their land, right. obviously. So, but yeah, they're away, like super away from all of that. Okay. And even still? Yeah, even still. Like, I mean, obviously you, ha- you would have Amerindians like in Georgetown on the coast and stuff, but most Amerindian communities are away from the coast. Oh. And were they able to like conserve their traditional ways of life because of the isolationism or did they kind of um, adapt and assimilate to the mix of cultures which Guyana They've is? They've managed to preserve their culture. Mm-hmm. So there's still people that speak with... Um, use the Armenian languages, you know, they still make food the traditional way, farm, hunt, all of that. They still wear their traditional clothing, oh. you know, they have dances, all of that. So it's commendable, actually. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. But as of now, they are the minority community in yeah, they are. Guyana. Right. That's pretty interesting. And do these Amerindians share culturally with Amerindians of other parts of the neighboring country, like Venezuela, Brazil? Well, um... Every like uh, every country has their like different tribes. Mm-hmm. So obviously, like Venezuela tribes are gonna be much different from ours. Mm. So they like they probably have like a different outfit they would wear, like traditional clothing and right. food they eat and stuff. But I think like our Armenians with Brazilian mm-hmm. Armenians, they they share like a similar kind of like food and stuff because uh, I've been to Brazil many times and right. the food that Armenians have, they would have as well. Do you mean the northern part of Brazil? Um. Yeah. Uh. So. So is the border kind of porous for Amerindians? So if an Amerindian living in the border can like just cross over to Brazil because yeah, because I've lived next to the border. That's where Region Nine is. Ah. Super close to Brazilian border. So we just drive over. Oh, it's it's chill. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we just drive over. Oh. You just need your passport and you just stamp uh-huh. it and you can go over. 
That's really interesting. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, so what happened afterwards? When, what was the reason why you guys, or how did you guys become independent from the British? <laughs> so, um, well, we actually celebrate independence on May 26th, mm-hmm. which is... Everything happened in May, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so ni- we got independence in 1966. Uh-huh. So 55 years, we're going to be celebrating independence. We didn't, Ooh. yeah, we became a republic on February 23rd, 1970. So uh-huh. there were two, um, two people, two men that are, you know, tanked for our gaining our independence you're Gandhi <laughs> so yeah basically so which was Forbes Barnham uh-huh. he was of African descent okay. and Chetty Jigan which was that sounds was Indian, I- Indian. Yeah. he was of Indian descent so the two of them came together you know to represent the like people of Ghana the majority okay. the two majorities and they and uh, there were other men as well I just can't remember their names <laughs> <laughs> these are like the most important yeah figures. those are the two most important ones so they fought really hard they went all the way to england mm-hmm. and you know they whatever they protested or whatever so that we can gain independence and we did um but eventually it like because of power and stuff um i think i believe forbes barnham kind of wanted more mm-hmm. so he kind of straight away and created his own political party because there was one political party the, oh they were both in the yeah, same political yeah. party okay. and then you know he wanted more and he drifted so he created his own party so then it was like africans versus indians all so one party there. supported by the african one yeah. party by the indians and that's still today uh, it's how it is today so during the independence struggle was yeah. it like united struggle against the british by both the africans and the indians yeah it was that's how it was what what was the how do you say it, the stimulus what drove the independence movement was it because of the need for more autonomy or do you believe that you know all of other colonies were collapsing around yourself and you wanted self-rule i believe it was because we've like so many other countries at the time, even before us, were gaining independence and stuff. And obviously, we wanted the same thing for us. Mm-hmm. And people saw, you know, their own, our own guidance. People saw that we were capable of gaining independence and doing it without the British. So that's right. why we fought so hard to gain independence right. in the first place. So, But the, the interesting thing is, French Guiana mm-hmm. is still a part of France. Yeah. It, and I, I, I got this fact that the longest border France has. So even though France is in Europe, yeah. French Guiana is considered like a part of it, mm-hmm. like a little part of it. Same was the case with Algeria before. So the longest French border mm-hmm. that France has is not in Europe. Mm-hmm. It's in South America, the border between Brazil and... Brazil, right? Mm-hmm. Brazil and French Guiana, which was like a mindfuck fact, <laughs> isn't it? And why, why do you think French Guiana is still a part of France? I have no clue. Honestly, I... Well, any time I, I really don't think of French Guiana that much. <laughs> you so, guys share a name. So, it's like so, little twin. Like, sometimes I'm like, are they still colonized? <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, I never know what's going on with French Guiana. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Do you have any French... Do you know any French Guiana is in Rude? I Russia? have. I don't know anybody from French Guiana. I've met f- people from French Guiana in like my own country, but like mm. I've never met like you know abroad or anything like that. Oh, dude, it's so interesting for mm-hmm. me. It's like I can actually. I'm like talking to a French person, but they live in South America. That also, when I tell people I'm from Guiana, they're like French Guiana. <laughs> How do you know French Guiana but not Guiana? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> So you think more people know French Guiana than Guiana? Yeah, it happens a lot because I'll be like, I'm from Guiana, and they're like, French Guiana? <laughs> I'm like, no, even with South American countries here too. Really? Like, there are a lot of people from South America here, you know, Venezuelans, yeah, people from Ecuador. Yeah. And we're like, I'm from Guiana. And they're like, French Guiana? I'm like, no, just Guiana. And they're like, <laughs> Guiana? I'm like, yeah, we speak English. They're like, oh, English Guiana. <laughs> like, <laughs> English Guiana. <laughs> yeah, there's one more called Dutch Guiana. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty interesting. Because I'm pretty sure other countries in South America, they don't know us as just Ghana. They still refer to us as British Ghana. Mm. Like, so, like, I think when you, like, translate it to their, like, into their language, it's, like, English Ghana. So, that's why. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, you got independence. Mm-hmm. Was it quite peaceful? Or was there, like, I a revolution really happening? I really won't say it was peaceful at all. There was a lot of rebellions. There was a lot of rebellions that took place in Ghana during those times. So, we have... We even have like days to commemorate, commemorate some of those things. Like we have one called the Burbis Rebellion, where it was like I think African slaves rebelled. Uh-huh. We even have like a monument found in Ghana called the 
1763 tree monument because in 1763 tree they had like this huge rebellion um which was led by one of the slaves called coffee so there's a huge monument john to him. coffee yeah and and the like square of georgetown so come remember him uh, but this was in the 1960s during that time or before no, that? that was way before, that way was before, way before that, yeah right. but like during the 19 like 60s when we were fighting for independence yeah we've had a lot of protests and stuff like that oh okay interesting and did you guys did you guys kind of look at the story of india and how we got independence in 47 as like the so we consider like kind of no not just india india indonesia were like post-world war ii countries which got independence exactly after that Mm -hmm. was like the start of decolonization the start Mm -hmm. of post-colonial power countries in the world did you guys kind of look at that as, as a template or as an example on how to fight I, against um, independence i think like people like gandhi and how we, he fought against the british well i think probably but I'm, i won't be quite sure because like you know even though we've heavily influenced by like the indian population and stuff we've obviously distanced the culture and everything so i think if we even have to focus on having a template or somebody to look for inspiration to be like i'm not a caribbean country mm-hmm. i think so i'm not sure which other caribbean country gained independence before us but uh, most likely there was one that came before us uh, we we're okay. obviously not the first or something but i'm pretty sure it was haiti but they from, they got it from the french yeah uh-huh so and, and that kind of started the dominoes effect in the caribbean yeah. region for i think Haiti's right. one of the first countries that gained independence but like it went terrible for them yeah yeah why why didn't it go how did it go good for you compared to haiti well i won't say we're at haiti's because haiti is considered the first poorest country and that's because france took all their resources and money and stuff like that right ghana is actually the second poorest country in the caribbean oh like in, i think like in that like side of the world actually you mean the western hemisphere yeah the western hemisphere so but um so at this point in time you say your economy is not as good as even venezuela's I won't say that. <laughs> I won't say that. <laughs> but we are considered um the second because Venezuela is really struggling right now. But at least as growing they up, were you, kind yeah, of growing up, you would always hear again it's like the second poorest country and stuff like mm. that because like I think like forty percent of the population is below the poverty line, and obviously that has to do with you know our e- economy and stuff like that because a lot of times we have people that you know would they go they go above and beyond to get educated and stuff like that but we don't have the jobs to offer them to give them we don't have those right. like so a lot of people just leave to where uh, yeah just usually. go overseas to get better jobs a better stuff like, most because guys crime go. rates and stuff like that is really high in ghana you know every uh-huh. day you hear because our population is so small as well we're less than a million people right so news travels really fast you mm. know it's like everybody knows everybody so every day you hear there's somebody missing there's a murder there's a car crash you know something like that so where do you guys immigrate to usually? The US. It's always like New York or Miami oh. or something. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Some even go to other Caribbean countries. Like, I know for instance, like Barbados, there's like a rival with Barbados and Guyanese people because it- they're like, you guys come to our country and take our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like the Mexicans of Barbados, yeah? <laughs> they are. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. And what... So you're saying the plantations, which mm-hmm. were the main economic resource, and a little bit of gold. Yeah. How did you guys deal with that once you became independent, where your market shifted? Before that, mm-hmm. the you know, United Kingdom was a market for yeah. your goods. How did it change that? How did you adapt to that? Well, because we we actually have so many resources, not just gold, it's diamond, it's timber, it's, you know, we mm-hmm. have those things, and then we have, like, uh, we were producing rice and sugar mm-hmm. before in the past because of the sugar plantations, obviously, and then we had rice as well. And then fishing, too, because, you know, we're at the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so the Caribbean Caribbean countries came together and we developed what's known as the um, CARICOM, which is the Caribbean Community and mm. um, Common Market. Okay. So the headquarters of that is actually in Ghana. Okay. So that's it was designed to create policies for Caribbean trade and like, you know, oh. so... So like free movement of goods between the yeah, Caribbean countries. So, yeah. Is, does that apply for people too? Can you move across the Caribbean countries without having a passport, I mean a visa? Yeah. Ah, so, so this is like your Eurozone, but for the Caribbean. Yeah. 
Okay, that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about that. Yeah, and even though the headquarters is in Ghana, there's a lot of Caribbean countries that say Ghana is not part of the Caribbean. Yeah. So, yeah, we do have that, like, fight. We, we do have the fight with other Caribbean countries. They're like, you guys are South American. You're not in the Caribbean. <laughs> and we're, we're like, okay, well, if we're not, you can come collect your headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> Which is in Ghana. That's, you know, from my perspective, too, it's kind of strange because, for me, a Caribbean country is an island. Like, if it's yeah. not an island, it's not Caribbean. Yeah, that's what they say, too, there's like oh we're islands and you have to be part of the Caribbean you, you have, have to be, be an island. you have to be supported by the Caribbean Sea surrounded by the Caribbean and Sea you're, you're and not we're not Atlantic surrounded. Ocean right yeah we're the Atlantic Ocean yeah. <laughs> so yeah so it's but because we're you know culturally and politically tied and like historically that's why we are part of the Caribbean the English speaking Caribbean yeah. I mean so can I ask would you consider Cuba to be part of the Caribbean Cuba hmm. well I think. I think they are, but they're just like you know Latin, Latin like um. Latin are they part Caribbean. of that Caribbean com Caribbean com what that organization you're talking about? Oh, uh, Caricom Market. Caricom Market. I'm not too sure. We I think there are 22 countries that are part of the um Caricom Market, but I'm not sure Cuba is part of it. So is it like the former British colonies, or was like French Haiti and all those countries also part of this, uh, market? Well, the. F- the four main countries that came together to form the market um, were... I'll, uh, I'll read it out. Yeah, it was Ghana, Trinidad, Barbados, and Jamaica, I believe. Yeah, and it is Antigua and Barbuda. Yeah. The Bahamas, Barbados, Belize. Belize. Belize is French. No, Belize is actually like in Central America. What? Yeah. Okay. They're in Central America. But they're also part of this. They're like next to Mexico. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're part of it, yeah, because they are part of the Caribbean. Ah, they so you don't have to be in the Caribbean to no. be part of the Caribbean. You can be in Central America. Yeah. You can be in you know, on the eastern corner mm-hmm. of South America, and you're still part of the Caribbean. And then there's the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Grenada, Grenada. Gra- Grenada. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> they're like Nutmeg Island. Yeah, Nutmeg Island. Yeah, yeah. That's where Nutmeg comes from. <laughs> oh really? Like, well, they're like a majority of their like oh. their export is like Nutmeg. Do you know for me Nutmeg means when you like. When you're playing football uh-huh. and you have an opponent uh-huh. and you put the ball between his legs, <laughs> that's called a nutmeg. Oh, that's, no, I didn't know that. That's our terminology. That's, that's the first thing that comes to my mind when you hear nutmeg, oh. not the nut. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's Guyana, Jamaica, Haiti, Montserrat. Montserrat, yeah. Where is that? Is that a country? It's, yeah, it's there. I just can't Is it like a small, tiny island? That... Yeah, it's really small. Ah, okay. St. Kitts and Nevis, I heard uh-huh. of that. Saint there Lucy. have the volcano eruption going on. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Is it close to you? No. Oh, so you can't see the... No. Uh, Ghana, that's actually the uh, fun fact about Ghana and Suriname and French Ghana is that we're known as the Ghana Shield because mm-hmm. we don't experience natural disasters like the rest of the Caribbean. There are no tectonic plate movements, so yeah. there's no... So we don't experience earthquakes. Like, we can feel tremors, uh-huh. but we don't experience, like, the super intense oh. ones. We don't experience hurricanes, flooding, yeah, because we are below sea level. So that's that's about it. That's a, that's a good point. You're below sea level. Mm-hmm. Six feet below. <laughs> Why are you not flooded? Are you like Nether- the Netherlands? Do you have like these big sea walls and... Well, oh, Ghana, oh my god. We do have these, we have something known as the sea walls, uh-huh. which is like walls put up to like, you know, block water from coming in. But I mean, we still get flooded. And because our drainage system is kind of poor, uh-huh. we have cokers. I don't even know what cokers are. Cokers? Yeah, we call them cokers. It's I'm like not pumps? Sh- um, they're like these... Oh. I don't know if it's funny. If you Google them, probably it's going to show up like a picture. But like, Whoa, what's it's the like spelling? big, what I is? think it's K-O-K-E-R-S. Cokers. They're like pipes. That's what it looked like. Like you see, like you see, Ghana's like a local. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a, it's like a Guyanese thing. Local term for a water channel. Yeah, it's kind of like a, this big wooden structure that kind of like, oh, yeah. This, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's like, like blocks the water. and I, Bund. I don't know. I, I, for me, I call this a bund. Yeah, we call it cokers in cokers. Ghana. Cokers. Ah, okay. So yeah, that's what we have, but like it sucks, so it doesn't <laughs> do much. So, so do you guys get flooded from the sea? Do you guys lose like land, cultivatable land because yeah, of flooding from happens. the sea? Yeah, that happens. You know, a lot of stuff, you know, it becomes damaged. A lot of people like, you know, because they're affected because so many people live on the coast, obviously they're going to be affected. Hmm. So a lot of stuff goes to waste. There, Like in 2005, there was a super huge flood. Uh, a lot of people die because diseases and stuff like that. 
But because, like only the people on the coast are usually affected by flooding, like where I live. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to deal with this shit. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like we get floods, but like where I live, it's kind of like higher up land. So oh, okay. like only certain parts would be flooded, but it's not like super serious or stuff. But how, how do you guys deal with it? Like for the future with like rising water levels coming mm-hmm. up, it's going to be much of a, yeah, more well, of a problem. I think for right because we've had, you know, recently we've had elections, which was last year, which was insane we, we've made international news for the lo- like the longest elections i think like five months what, what was the news about <laughs> why i think if news? you if you google like i think if you google guyana's elections it's gonna show up on bbc and stuff like that mm-hmm. even like the um the last like the secretary like the u.s like secretary or something tweeted about us and stuff about the fight for democracy and all of that kind of stuff so no what was so crazy about this because election. it was cra- because Ghana recently discovered oil I heard about that yeah so <laughs> and because we have oil now a lot of people are paying attention to us Ooh. and because you know the two parties which are parties in power is obviously going to benefit from you know having oil right. and, and see how they progress the country so that was why the elections were so intense because the previous government were saying that they had this like vote where you would have to say like um I forgot what was the name, but somebody, they weren't expecting somebody from their opposition to say yes, because they wanted like the elections to happen soon. Mm -hmm. So they had somebody that did say yes, Mm -hmm. and it created havoc because they didn't want the elections to be, um, I think the elections were supposed to be like in 2020, no, in 2019, like of November, but they didn't want that. They carried on and they went on. So we eventually had the elections last year, Mm -hmm. which was when the election was supposed to be anyway. But it was sold on because they were trying to rig the like people were trying to rig the election because mm. they wanted to stay in power or like they were saying that they don't have enough like um like the pollings the polling stations were wrong or like whatever like the I forgot what you call them SOPs or something like that that's what they call them back SOPs SOPs I think it was like statement of statement of statement of polls or something that's what you call them so that's like abbrevi- it's like an abbreviation okay so like it'd be like to cast the votes and stuff so it was like a whole we even had people from the U S came in to like. Observe, observe yeah like international so, observers and that didn't go well because they're they were saying oh we don't need you go back <laughs> 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 like why are you here now so it was like it was really it was really long it went on for five months so wow. so many things happened like even like when they had the building where they kept all these like the ballot boxes they would be like oh there's a fire going on or they need to, spray. <laughs> they need to spray they need to like spray the building because it was like insect infected or something like there was a, like and it's like they all like, of that went on and this made the news and went <laughs> international for it so that's crazy because yeah. it's like they're giving every reason to suspect the result of the election yeah. isn't it and what eventually happened from that who won well the the people that are in opposition now obviously they lost so the party that which was, is the indian party or the african well, party I, 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 is it correct to call them like that? Oh uh, well, I mean, if you look at it like that, yeah, because a lot of, uh, like, the party that won, they're you know, a lot of their supporters are Indian. Mm-hmm. They were in power for like the last twenty three years, and then wow. they came out of power. The last time. But yeah, so and then, when so then we won again. Well, not we, but they won again. <laughs> <laughs> we. <laughs> they won again. I don't want to say we. <laughs> You already did. <laughs> so, yeah. But we, do, I mean, we do have supporters from other, like, obviously from other races and stuff. So, mm-hmm. each and, party has their own supporters. So, And, uh, again, to the Amor Indians, mm-hmm. which, which side are they more represented uh, in which party? <laughs> that's really funny. That's really funny. It really depends on where Lady Community is. Like, some people, there were other parties too. It's not just two main parties. There were other parties that were involved, smaller parties. So, they had their own support. Mm-hmm. Like, so, especially if there was a party led by, let's say, an Armenian person. So, they would have that, mm. you know. But, like, where I'm from, um, Region 9, a lot of people voted for the party that's in power now. And they've always have, like, that's that region would be, like, theirs. They, yeah, it would be there. So, it really depends on... Especially, like, people who are in charge of that region. So, like, you say, each region has, like, a mayor or something. So, like, if the mayor is, like, for that party, they ca- try to get as much people to vote for that party. Right. Know? So, that that's what happens. Mm. Dude. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's but it's fair to say it's kind of, uh, like, two main parties mm-hmm. competing against each other. It's definitely two main parties, yeah. And who, in your history, like, you said the past 23 years yeah. it's been one particular party. Yeah. 
So was it before that? Was it like one party then the other, one party then before the other? Before that, it was like um, it was actually. Well, I've mentioned Barnham Forbes. He was yeah. the first um, one that had his like, um, the first our first president was actually a Chinese guy. What Arthur Chung? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> He God, our, he was our first president. I think Forrest Bornham was like vice president or something, but um, yeah. When he when he was in power, he believed that Ghana can do on its like, you know, do it on its own. So he started. He stopped like imports of like basic stuff like flour, sugar, and stuff. Because was he, he like was, a like, communist or something? Something like that. Okay. And he, <laughs> believed, he believed that Ghana could produce these things. So and that, it went really bad because yeah, it became so bad that people had to line up to go get flour and, and you know like sugar and he basic did. stuff like that because he believed that we could produce these things and that was obviously the case because we just gained independence. You know, we just can't like yeah. do all that like he did at a once. Cuba. Yeah. So. That went really bad, so a lot of people wanted him like out of power and stuff. So that's how come the present party that's in power now, which is led by Chetty Jigan, uh-huh. they, they did. yeah they they won, and then his like his wife after he passed away, his wife took over, oh. and then she passed it on to um, this guy called Bart Jagdeo. He studied here actually at For this real? university. Yeah, he's so, like in one. Of the, he's in the main building. His picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's yeah, an alumni. So you're saying your former president was an alumni of yeah, the day? Yeah. Oh. So we like there are a lot of people would be like we have close political ties with Russia. Uh-huh. So like when elections was going on, they were like, oh, they probably got Russia to rig the elections. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but he was he was president for a really long time. Uh-huh. And then like, 2015. No, I think in 2011, they switched him out because obviously he was running for so long with somebody else. And then he was, he's, we don't really regard him as president. Like when people like say his name, like we're like, oh, he was president. Damn. Who? The, um, his, he's Donna Ramatar. Donna Ramatar. He came after Jag, Bar Jagdio. So he's president. He, for like, he came after the guy who studied in Rudin. Yeah. Okay. He came after. So like, but we always forget that like he was president. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he was like, it's like I'm a puppet ruler. He was. Yeah. I guess you could say. It. I guess that's what they would say. They say about him. But he he was just he's just not like hot tempered or like super you know bold or out there. He was okay. just a really calm guy. So okay. I don't think president. The, N- the, nothing was interesting him. happened during his yeah, time. Yeah. So when it was the next elections after him, they lost. Okay. <laughs> so, us <laughs> and so yeah so that's what happened ah and right now right now well who's the president the president's Irfan Ali again Indian dude yeah okay hmm, that's interesting and the, at, in the Indian communities they're mm-hmm. like a division based on religion as well, it is in, 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 in India well we have Hindu how, how is the demographic of the Indian population I think well, overall, like, let's say the religion population overall, I think, like, 60% are Christians. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the rest would be, like, let's say 30% is Hindus. Mm-hmm. And the rest would be, like, Islam and then, like, other religions. Mm-hmm. Like, well, not other religions, but, like, people that are not religious and stuff. Mm-hmm. But those are the three main ones. Mm-hmm. And in the Indian community? What, how is it? The, I think it definitely Hindu. The majority? Yeah. Okay. And does that become uh for example you have a an muslim president at yeah. this point of time first e- muslim president even though he is a minority community so it well is- i think ghana when because i know in like india like those two like hindus and islams are always at it yeah i feel but like yeah <laughs> but like in ghana we not so much we really do not like put too much focus on that uh-huh. so like we've always had people like a Hindu like would marry a Christian, he'd marry a Muslim and stuff okay. like that. I think the Muslim community in Ghana is much more strict obviously, but like we really won't view them on their religion. Oh. So it really true. doesn't that's, matter. That's yeah. really interesting. So that is one part of the Indian the, the Indian roots which you guys didn't quite adopt that mm, partisanship based on religion. But what about the caste system? Is there any Definitely did not. Definitely did not? <laughs> yeah. Well I mean we have colorism that exists, mm-hmm. obviously so but that's so common. I think like throughout like every like every everybody's like every if you're culture. darker you're like if you're darker you're ugly, mm-hmm. and that's within the Indian community too. But like we don't have that caste system at all. Uh, no. It, it, so it, it it it's like what what would you from an Indian perspective mm-hmm. would I be able to say that the people of the higher caste mm-hmm. didn't actually make it 
make their way into Guyana to exert their caste hegemony on other people because most of the endangered labourers were not the land-owning elites who came to India. Well, that's... I mean, that's, who came to Guyana. I, I, well, you could say that, right? But, like, at least from my family history, that what I've known that I've known about is that, like, I think he's my great-great-grandfather. What I've read about him, when he came to Guyana, he was already from a rich family. Mm-hmm. And he still came anyway. Oh, really? Because he was told there was going to be gold. Okay. And, I don't know, he's just... So he came anyway because he wanted more money. Uh-huh. So obviously when he came and he had to work on the plantations, he didn't want to do that because he was already from a rich family. So right. what he did was he took a brick and smashed in one of the one of the guys that were overlooking. What? He, 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 and he ran away. Whoa, for real? <laughs> yeah. So, you mean he smashed in one of the colonizers, yeah. British people? Okay. Yeah, one of their, and he just ran away and he moved to somewhere else. And I think he, in his, during his like, lifetime, he spent in Ghana. He went back to India like twice to bring back stuff to Ghana. Whoa. Yeah. And why did he not go back to India? Because he obviously was cheated out of the contract. He yeah, well, well, he probably saw potential or something there because he mm. married like thrice, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, he he's like, a lot of potential there. <laughs> <laughs> he married thrice and he had like, he had his kids or whatever. And st- I mean, he even had a sister that came with him as well. Mm. But yeah, I, I think their last names were like Silva or something. Okay. I can't remember. But like, I have the whole history thing. I'll send it to you. Oh, that, yeah. that's pretty cool. What else can you tell about your family during the times? of the british Where honestly that that's on my mom's side of the family mm-hmm. so and that's really all i didn't even know that until like somebody like a cousin reached out to me and he was like hey you're my family and i'm like huh what yeah he just reached out to me and he's like hey we related because i'm like how are we related <laughs> and he was like oh my like my grandfather and your grandmother are like like siblings or something i'm like huh so i had to message my mom and she had to confirm and everything i'm like wow oh. that's so cool because he runs a like a page on instagram of like like stories of like Guyanese history right so like he posts about those things so he's always like researching on stuff so he, re- he reached out to me and i was like oh that's really cool is that quite common that you can find your distant cousin somewhere well in ghana a lot of people because we're so small there's yeah. a lot of people that are related right it's super like so you sometimes you never know <laughs> <laughs> you really never know but yeah like everybody's you know we're all like super related anyway so Whoa. yeah but um and you know, because you have social media now and stuff, it's super easy to find people. That would be really cool if someone called you up and be like, bro, I'm related to you. Like, <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> and he did the whole family tree, like, explanation uh-huh. and everything. He sent me, a, like, a diagram of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So How do you feel about that? I was, well, I'm not, like, super, I was not super shook about it, like, being related to people, obviously, because, you know, you obviously have family that you don't know about. Mm-hmm. But, like, when he, like, went up, like, he's like, oh, our great-great-grandfather was from India. I'm like, oh, wow, you knew all of that. <laughs> Could he also point out which part of India he was from? Um, I believe... I think he said, like, a port of, like... The, wait, I have this on my phone, actually. Okay, let's check that wait. out. Wait. <laughs> I'm just really curious if he's from the south, because then... No. I might know someplace. Wait, I know it's on my page somewhere. But I think it was, like, most of... Mo- we came from, like, Calcutta. Calcutta, which is in the northeast. Yeah, that's what they said, so... And we refer to as East Indians because yeah. Yeah, they say we came from the East. And uh, while I was doing the research, you're mm-hmm. mainly from the Avant Kingdom, which mm-hmm. was like like Bihar and Bojpuri. I which have is, no idea what that is. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> language group or a community in the north really? side of India. Oh, I might not find it yet. It's so far down on my page. <laughs> oh, it's here. So... Calcutta something. Okay, let me just read. Gulam Hussein, better known as Kanchan, came to the then British Gu- Ga- Guyana mm-hmm. as an indentured labor at the age of 20, accompanied by his 16-year-old sister, Jamurat. They came from the port of Calcutta on August the 14th, 1891, on the SS Ganges. According to their immigration certificate, their father was Sova. They came from Tana Perguna, subdistrict of Saseram, the district of Shahabad, and the village of Bisanpur from Asamgar, Asamgar, India. They were indented to Cane Grove. Conscience number was 26. His height was 5 feet 5 inches. Oh, he was a short guy. Yeah. <laughs> 5 inches and a half. And his listed body marks were a scar on his left cheek. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, according to the stories I heard, he was a Muslim, which means Muslim, mm-hmm. but of high caste. I don't know caste system existed in Islam, but in yes. India, even that's possible. 
When he was coming on the ship, they weren't allowing the high Muslim caste on the ship. And so he told the British officials his name was not Gulham Hussein, but Kanchan. Oh. Yeah. So he pretended to be of a lower yeah. caste just to get on the ship. Yeah. Okay. They came from a wealthy family. And so they so when they put him on the estate to work, he was not the type to do this work. Yeah. <laughs> One day he decided he had enough. So he took a brick and smashed it on the face of the overseer and escaped to a land that he, along with others, would develop into the land that would become known as Little Biabu. Mahaika Creek. Mahaika Creek. Yeah. He said to have visited India two to three times and would bring back clothes, sheets, etc. Just for clothes, he go back to India? Come yeah. on, bro. He's believed to have had multiple wives at uh, different times. Three is known. Yeah. However, two of those three names are, are known. Yeah. Jumratan, who is believed to be his first wife, came at the age of 18 with her brother Mano- Manowar mm-hmm. on the same ship as Kanchan and his sister, as well as indentured to the same plantation. His second wife is Oj- uh, Ojir- Ojirun, yeah, a.k.a. No Sub. Dude, that's difficult for me to... <laughs> Sitting beside him, his third wife is Subarati Subartin, a.k.a. Chigi. He's known to have seven children, Aziza, Najiran, Abdul Aziz, a.k.a. Papi. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, that's a common nickname. Yes. Faidan, Ali, a.k.a. Masa, Abdul Kadir, a.k.a. Gainak. His seventh child, Gulchan, is with his third wife. She is the second picture. Kulchan died young. It is said a dunce tree yeah. was planted on Kanchan and one of his wife's graves. It was located on the reef top, reef top, yeah. not too far from the rice factory. So this would be your great, yeah, great great grandfather, like one of his wives, and this was like his second wife. They're scary looking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they are kind of scary looking. Uh, for a five foot five dude, yeah. <laughs> he looks kind of intimidating, doesn't he? <laughs> Wow, that's pretty cool. And you guys are so good at recording your history, isn't it? Well, I mean, not everybody has that same, like, privilege or whatever. But I think he found, my cousin that, you know, researched that, he found his those that type of information from other family members. Mm. And, like, I think if you go to the public library, there uh, are some documents on it, but not many on, like, so many people. Because... And, so and we the, were lucky enough to have that yeah. information. And the important thing is the British did document all the people who were coming here and to who, to which plantation they were indentured. So there were some written records of yeah, that. Yeah, there were written records of the, some of those people. But I won't, I won't say it would, was done for like the Africans because a lot of their like don't know where they come from. A lot of their names were changed. Right. They obviously weren't allowed to practice their religion. Like we were, right. Indians were given more freedom to practice their religions and stuff like that. Keep their names. Mm. So, yeah. Wow. Because even in India, mm-hmm. I don't know who my gran- great-grandfather or grandmother is. Mm-hmm. I just know to my grandparents' generation. Mm-hmm. Before that, I don't know. Even my parents are kind of mm, not very clear on who that person <laughs> is. So it's really it's really fascinating that yeah. you can... You, there is so my much My great-grandfather is actually still alive. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. he is. Really? Yeah. From, from your father's side? From my mom's Ma- side, actually. Mom's. Yeah. So, oh, so this is from your father's side? This, this is from my mom's side. But like so from, this is your great great grandfather. Yeah. Oh, okay. Whoa. And from your father's side, is there any sort of? Uh, yeah, the, the, I don't know anything about like my dad's side of the family. Mhm. Have you tried searching for it? Well, I have, but like my dad's side of the family is literally the only family. Their last name, everybody's with his last name is his family. In Guyana. Yeah. In all of Guyana. Yeah. Whoa. So yeah, so it's really hard to find information on them. Since considering we are the only family. All right. So it was like hard to know and stuff. Whoa. This is so cool. Mm-hmm. So that's a story of like, you know, there's so many Indian communities in mm-hmm. different countries, like the Caribbean, in Malaysia, yeah. Indonesia. And most Indians don't know about that Indian diaspora, which yeah. was spread all over the place. And it's really important that we do kind of respect and read more and mm-hmm. get to know about that. Have you ever thought about coming back to India, to Kolkata, and the village? Mm, could, you, could you show me that again? I just want to see which village on the map. I tried Googling that too, and it's like, it was so, like, I have no idea what I was looking at. Yeah, the I village name. Tana Pergun Sab District of Sasiram, District of Shabad, village of Pisunpur. That's a proper uh, North Indian. Pisun, Bihar. Ah, it's in Bihar. Bisanpur Kali Mandir. Ooh, so let me see. From Azamgarh. 
I'm, I'm, I went hyper local. I searched for the Bisanpur, the name of mm-hmm. the village. Yeah. And it is ah, it's it's in, it's near the Nepalese border. Mm-hmm. And I have a friend Motihari. I have a friend named Akash. Mm-hmm. He is from this place. And so your great great grandfather made the journey from here to Kolkata. And Kolkata was like the British head, uh, head, headquarters at that time. <laughs> and then he made a journey all the way across India through, I think... It, through, yeah, probably that's how they Through the Cape under, of yeah. Good Hope. I don't think the Suez Canal was open yeah, at that time. So under there. Under there and all the way here. Yeah. God damn! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they say Indians are like not too adventurous, but <laughs> this generation of Indians were going for it. <laughs> That's that's really amazing. So have you tried like? Do you have this wish of coming back to India to where your grandparents were? Well, I've I mean I've thought about it obviously, but I feel like because I, like if I have to speak on other people, they don't really like because they don't know their family and stuff. They've never like looked really into it mm. because um, a lot of actual Indian people like from India when they see us and they like they know we're not from india they're like they look down on us because really yeah they do they in, in, like, oh in, you're not indian enough you don't speak hindi you don't do this yo, I, I don't like, speak like, hindi like you know you know because so yeah so we do face but that. you're not indian yeah you're not indian yeah you're, we're not indian you're, you're of indian origin yeah we are so that you should literally not give a fuck yeah so but you know it's still like they'd be like oh you're not like you're not indian enough you can you not do this but we still have the same like you know, we still have some same culture. We same food, dances, stuff like that. All that we music, Bollywood, right. we have it. <laughs> so yeah, but um, I mean, I've thought of going to India. Not exactly there, mm-hmm. but I've thought about going to India. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would be a fun trip overall. So. Yeah, it would be a fun trip. But if if like if I knew my ancestors mm-hmm. were from this particular part of the country, I don't I, even know if they're still alive. So I don't really know who I'd be looking for. Like exactly like family members. No, you no, know, like just to see. From what they came from, yeah, just to I mean, see yeah, that. that would be really cool. I'd be really curious to if if I was able to find some data on who my great grandfather parents were. It's really cool that you do have that. Yeah, and kudos to the person who did find mm-hmm. it. It it takes a lot of effort to go through all yeah. those archives and documents and find it, wouldn't it? But that's crazy, and it's really impressive. And again, like not Indian enough thing. Where in what context do you, do you have interactions with Indians to get that particular? feeling where they say well you're not indian enough well um i think it's more people that actually like migrate and go to the u.s like so a lot of like especially in like new york like queens there's a lot of Guyanese people out there mm-hmm. and obviously like people from india that go there as well right. they'll meet them you know obviously they're gonna meet them, like and uh, they'll be like oh you're indian and i'm like no i'm from ghana so you have to explain you're from ghana right. oh you're not indian enough <laughs> you know like they're speaking their language and like oh, we don't understand them they're like uh-uh you're not indian enough. we even have people like from because we have an indian embassy in ghana uh-huh. and they don't really like us what, are you, what do you mean what makes you think that <laughs> it's a, they just don't because they, they stick to themselves they uh-huh. don't really interact with the other indian people like Guyanese indian people they stick within their own like even like we have like an indian restaurant in ghana i remember one time me my mom and my sister wait 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 wait. indian restaurant what's the difference between an indian restaurant in ghana because you guys yeah literally well, eat because because same food. yeah we, well, we have similar food we, uh-huh. we have indian food but right. we made it our own okay so it's not going to be exactly like indian food that you have like in india so you don't call that an indian restaurant you call that a Guyanese restaurant well we call it we call it an indian restaurant because it's like their food is your food is different from ours in a way okay even though we we have we have curry or whatever our curry is different from the type ah, of curry that you okay. guys would make so we call it indian restaurant because it's authentic indian food authentic indian food so i remember one time i went there with my mom and my sister and the waiter he's he's he from india he came up to us and he's like where are you guys from and we're like we're from here <laughs> and he was like really you guys are really nice for Guyanese people <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> they're like what so when he left my mom and my sister were just like all looking at each other like why would you say that why would you say that <laughs> I don't you're really know. nice for guy and his people, people yeah and it's Whoa. it's actually very common for people to say that like they a lot like yeah they'd be like oh you're Guyanese you're nice for Guyanese <laughs> I, I find that really strange, especially coming from Indian people. Mm-hmm. But Indian people are kind of dicks, but yeah. I, I kind of understand that. <laughs> so, but yeah. still, because 
okay, like you told, you're not Indian enough. Mm-hmm. Since I'm from like the south side of India, mm-hmm. I get that all the time. And I think it, I think too why he said it too was because a lot of our, like our Indians back home, were like m- they're more darker skin, you know. You mean so, Indian Indians? Yeah, no, like or my like ah, my okay. Indian. So that like, they're more like brown skin and stuff. Like right. so, like usually like a fair skin Indian, you would look at them like, oh, you're probably mixed. Like you probably have like Portuguese or something in you. They look at you like that. So my mom is super fair skin. Uh-huh. She's not mixed though. She's okay. just super fair skin. So and I think because he has that idea, like that colorist idea. Uh-huh. So he probably looked at her and like, oh, she's probably not from here because she's fair skin and stuff. So ah, it's funny though because a lot of Indians, Indians that are in Ghana. They're super dark skin. Right. <laughs> we are in general super dark skin. Yeah. Just that our movie industry makes it look like all Indians are white. Yeah. But why do you use the term fair and not white? Because I thought it was like an Indian thing where uh-huh. we don't use white. We uh-huh. use you have fair skin uh-huh. and you have dark skin. I be I think because we don't we don't like we say white like we refer just to white people when we say white. So we right. just say fair skin. That's how we just grew up saying it. It's always been a thing. I I thought it was like a specific to India concept uh, no. thing, but. I don't know that I always found the term fair mm-hmm. to refer to skin tone uh, mm-hmm. to be kind of strange because it's you know skin tone is like a spectrum of two yeah. colors and fair doesn't fall anywhere in the range of a color mm-hmm. and I found it very strange but it's kind of interesting that you guys also use it yeah I need to talk to other like brown communities yeah. of different parts of the world to see if they also use it as like mm-hmm. a comparative measure for the skin tone yeah. But is there kind of the same, you already told that, like there is, like this person considered your mother to be nicer than a Guyanese person since she was more fair. Yeah. Is, is that, does that, um, how do you say, attitude exist in Guyanese society as a whole? Where yeah, it does. People will be like, um, I think it's very common within our Indian community, be like, oh, why? Like if you like, like say for instance, you like somebody in there, like another person comes into the picture and be like, you like that person, but he's so dark skin. Oh, you know, like shit. why? Like why do you like? He's so dark skin, so it's very common. So what about the African community then? The African descent community. You can't literally, you can't say that to them because that is their skin tone. You can't like use. I a mean, I think even in African communities, it does exist too because this... yeah, that's oh. it exists because they'd be like they'd be like oh you're too dark like and you know they automatically assume because you're too dark you're ugly. Oh, so it does exist within the both communities. Wow. That's news. Yeah. In India, it does exist. It exists quite openly mm-hmm. because you, usually when people say Indians are not racist mm-hmm. because our form of racism is so ingrained yeah. in normal, it's so normalized that we don't consider it to be racist, mm-hmm. but it actually is. Yeah. That's, that's my thoughts on it. But it's, it's surprising that, it's not surprising, it's interesting that you mm-hmm. have also taken that form of racism yeah. towards there. Because it... From India, it kind of stems from a casteist perspective too, where yeah. your skin color kind of makes it apparent, mm-hmm. not always, but makes it apparent which particular caste hierarchy yeah. you belong to. And this, and hence valuing people based on that is uh, extended consequence of the caste system. That's really interesting. It's just really like funny because like in Ghana, um, obviously the common... That's the enemy, the common enemy is the white man, the colonizer. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. like, we don't view. But is it? They don't view them as is the it? enemy. They like guys, worship them. Yeah, worship them. So it's kind of the same in India. Like it's outrageous. It is like honest. Like I don't know if a white foreigner comes to India, yeah. he will be respected more. He would yeah, be, have more same, privileges. It's the same. He would get more attention. Mm-hmm. Than if a person from Africa or China yeah. were to come to India, even though they are the in quotes the colonial yeah. enemy, which is kind of the master slave mentality, which yeah. has been you wanted to please them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing in Ghana. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting. I guess that things don't change. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the food. How did you guys? How did you guys make our food better or worse? I- I'll be the judge is, of that. Guys, food is superior. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> superior. <laughs> and that is because obviously we don't have only Indian food because we have we're we're known as land of six races because we have six different races. Which are so the Amerindians, Africans, Indians, Chinese, Portuguese. What was the other one? English. No, it said European. No. That's European. So yeah, no. European. Uh, so in each, you know, obviously six different races, six different cultures, mm-hmm. traditions, foods and stuff. So like Armenians, our national dish is pepper pot. 
which is an uh, Amerindian dish actually. Pepper pot? It's yeah, pepper pot. Guyanese pepper. What is that? Is that a soup? It's not. It's like a gravy type of thing. Made out of beef? Yeah. Oh, well, you can use beef, beef or chicken or stuff, oh, but it's, it's it's better with beef. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's made with kazrip, which is something you get from sugar, I think, when you like burn it or something. Okay. It goes through a whole process. Like, that's why it's so dark? Yeah, that's why it's so dark. That's that why it has that thick color. Syrup. Yeah, it's like a thick syrup. So it's actually sweet? It's not really sweet. It's uh, it's super spicy because it's called pepper pot for a reason. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we it's super common to have it during Christmas time. It's like a tradition. Every household in Ghana has pepper pot Christmas time. We eat it with bread. It Gar- is- you know Gordon Ramsay? Gordon Ramsay, yeah. Yeah, he came to Ghana and he made this. Mm. He has like a whole like, I think it's on YouTube. Yeah, he goes around places yeah, and makes so it. So he came to Ghana and he made pepper pot. So that's our like national dish, which is obviously Armenian influence. And then... Like for like, let's can say, I ask a question? You you guys are chill with eating cow, right? Even the Hindus in Ghana. Or do you guys yeah, like? Well, Hindus in Ghana they're more strict, obviously. So they'd be like, no, they don't eat beef. Really? Yeah, they don't Whoa. eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I love beef. Yeah. So I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be Hindu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm from the south. I also love beef. My dad, he grew up in a Hindu family. Okay. But like his uncle was like Christian. So uh-huh. he would lean more to his uncle's side because he loved beef as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know, beef, like it's kind of politicized in yeah. my region. And a lot of religion, a lot of bullshit there. Yeah. But if you had to choose between religion and beef, mm-hmm. beef any day of the week. So yeah, I love steak, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So yeah. So that's that's like an Armenian dish. We also have like other obviously other things that come from that, but that would definitely be the main one when you think of an Armenian dish. What's a a Guyanese Indian specific dish like? What is that'd like? be chicken curry. <laughs> Let me just say you have the Guyanese Ga- chicken curry. Guyanese. That's actually a whole debate in the Caribbean because we say chicken curry, but like Trinidad and other countries they say curry chicken, <laughs> and it's a whole debate. Because oh, they're we said chicken curry exactly, and we tell them that we'd be like, We're right, it's chicken curry. They're like, No, it's curry chicken. I mean, there's a whole debate going on about it. The, you know, you know, the difference is mm-hmm. some people consider curry to be the spices, mm-hmm. we consider curry to mm-hmm. be like the dish. Uh-huh. There's a difference. So, when you say chicken curry, uh-huh. that means a dish made of chicken, uh-huh. when you say curry chicken, uh-huh. that means spicy chicken. And then they argue with us and they'd be like, they call us backwards. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> like, you Guyanese people are backwards. And I'm like, listen, we have the most Indians in the yeah. entire Caribbean. I think we would be the most right. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I asked the Indian guy in the conversation, I agree. I'm Miss Guyana with this one. So thank you. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, Guyanese chicken curry. Whoa. This, and this we have very ro- similar to what we back. Yeah, we, we have on. roti. So we have... Guyanese like, roti? Is that yeah. It? We have like two different types of roti. So we have like the oil roti, which is more thinner. Like that one. Mm-hmm. And then we have sad roti, which is really sad? thick. Sada. I don't know if you're going to find that. S- like online. A- S-A-D-A, I think. Sada roti. <laughs> yeah. It's like super thick. Yeah, it's like that one. Oh, okay. Do you know, in, in our language, sada means like normal. Like oh. a beach. Ne? So yeah, that's the two type of rotis that we usually... It, it, it's, it's not... It, it's not, we don't have the exact kind of same thing in India, mm-hmm. but it kind of, you know. Another similar. really common, like, Indian dish, which is super popular within the Hindu community, especially when they're fasting or, like, they have, like, Hindu weddings, is uh-huh. seven curry. Seven curry? Guyanese seven curry. Okay, okay it's a, Yeah, so it's, like, seven different types of, like, vegetarian oh, type of curries. It's a thali. You call this a thali? Mm-hmm. You guys eat out of this leaf? Yeah, we Whoa. have. Those are very common. Those Whoa. leaves. Um, yeah. Seven curry. And, and rice in the middle. Yeah. This is how I usually eat food back home. Mm-hmm. We have rice and we have like a lot of things in the yeah. middle and take our I hands. actually don't eat this. Why? Because I'm like a meat person. Why this, like, just try this is like vegetarian curry. But like the only thing I would really eat because it's like dal, mm-hmm. that like kalu that I mentioned, which is like spinach or whatever. Uh-huh. You have like chana. Chana, yeah. Yeah, chana curry. That's samba. And then you have something called... Um, you have something called samba? What is samba? Yes. Oh, wait. Okay. Then. We have this thing called... We call it katahar in Ghana. What is that? Samba. It's like it's a gravy made of lentils and vegetables. Oh, well, I'm not too sure because it's kind of like similar to dal. Ah, uh, it's not dal. It's yeah. Different. Yeah, but, Yeah, so, and then we have something called katahar mm-hmm. in Ghana. I'm not sure what you call it in India, uh, but I know you guys have like a different name for it. What, what should I search for? Katahar. K. K. T. A. Katahar curry. Katahar curry. Let's it's see what that is. Obviously such a Guyanese thing. 
Is that mushrooms? No, oh, mushrooms. chakka! For real! <laughs> for real! Dude! It's, it's called chakka. Uh-huh. I, jackfruit. Yeah, yeah so, jackfruit. Yeah, that's what I was trying to remember like the English version yeah, of the name. Dude. Wait, so wait, yeah, wait, wait, that's wait. it. That's in seventh grade. Let's see well. how we make it right. Dude, this is like I hate this, but my parents love it for some reason. I don't like it. That's I why like I refuse it. to eat seventh grade because I know it's in there. Yeah. And pumpkin. Ah. We have pumpkin. Matanga. Yeah, dude, pumpkin I'm, I'm saying Malayalam right now. So this is how we make jackfruit. Uh Dude, yeah, we curry since everything. I, since I used to hate this, but since I haven't had Indian food in two years, uh-huh. this looks up absolutely delicious right now. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, so, yeah. this is this is it. You guys have chakka, man. What do you guys call this in your language? Katahar. Katahar. Oof. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we call it chakka. Thing is, it's actually um, the Portuguese and the Spanish mm-hmm. took it from our language uh-huh. and they call it jaka. Mm. This is really interesting for me. So, yeah. Blend. This looks so beautiful right now. Yeah, and like from the Africans, they mm. we have they have cassava leaves. They love cassava leaves for some reason. Well, yeah, I think when they make cassava, I think cassava pones or something. But the most common African dish would be cook up, which we eat New Year's. That's well, a super, how do I spell it? Cook up rice. Cook up. So, yeah. So C O O K U P. Cook up rice. Uh, cook up rice. Yeah. It's like peas and rice with coconut milk. It's super good. Ooh. It's like when you eat it, it makes you want to sleep. <laughs> it's so it's super. Sedative. Yeah, it's super common as um during New Year's. Like everybody makes a pot of cook up rice New Year's Day. And it's African. Yeah, it's African dish. This looks beautiful. And what about the Portuguese? What did they give you? What well, about the Chinese? Chi- Chinese fried rice. Chocolate. <laughs> chi- chi- oh my God! It's Chinese, Guyanese, Chinese fried rice. Uh-huh. Top tier. The best. Well, I'm not saying this because I'm biased. I'm just saying this because I know it's a fact. <laughs> because like other like even like um, Trinidadian like their Guyanese Chinese fried rice, they would come to Guyana and be like, they or yeah, ours is super way better compared uh, to which theirs. one is. It's like all of this, like with like that dude, one, that's a I guess. Piece of chicken in there. Yeah. Dude, I'm so hungry. Right yeah, now. so that's the Guyanese fried rice, and we have. Okay, can I be honest? It looks like our fried rice too. I don't know. Yeah, what's... it looks like a fried rice, but it's super different from like the fried rice that like, I've tasted from like an authentic Chinese place, I guess. Ooh, in terms of spices. Yeah, I guess. Blend. This looks beautiful. This beautiful. Damn. Yeah, like the Portuguese and Europeans, they, they didn't really give us like solid dishes. It was more like cakes and pastries and mm. stuff. You can't beat them when it comes to baking. Oh, <laughs> Blend. This is really, really delicious. And if while I was doing the research, mm-hmm. if I'm an American mm-hmm. and I hear about Guyana, the first thing that would come to my mind is. Jonestown. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I feel like Guyanese, like a Guyanese society, we don't really think about it as much. Really? Yeah, we like, honestly, we don't. Like, Jonestown is like, I mean, it's it's a tragedy, obviously, but... Um, Guyanese weren't involved in yeah, it Yeah, like, so they weren't super way. involved, but yeah, it was, it was, it was wild. I think it happened like... 78? I think it was in my region, but like... Away. Really? Yeah, but not like in like my, where I live. It was like uh-huh. a different, a whole different community, but yeah. So, let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. Let's tell the audience what happened. So, in the 1970s, there was this really crazy dude called uh, Jim Jones. Yeah, Jim Jones. He's a priest or something. He was a pastor. Yeah, so he was, he was American yeah. and his, he had this ideology of so Christian socialism, mm-hmm. which is like rejecting American capitalism as also being very Christian and all that stuff. And he started this commune in Guyana. Yeah. The Guyanese government lended land to him. And he flew over around 1,000 Americans to live in this commune. And this guy's ideas were kind of fucked up. Mm-hmm. And he was kind of apocalyptic, end of the world kind of thing. And he made 900 and something people commit mass suicide yeah. in one day by consuming Kool-Aid yeah. with cyanide yeah and this included children this included women this included men and before 9 11 it was the biggest civilian uh the civilian massacre yeah in american history mm-hmm. because almost 900 civilians I'm, died. i think there were some Guyanese to like indigenous uh, people that were affected oh you know, they were killed as in, well in, yeah. in this they were also part of the commune mm-hmm, yeah so plus the Guyanese people who tragically passed away in that time so in it, this it was like a really for me 
it's all things wrong about a cult. When I hear the word cult, mm-hmm. the first thing that comes to my mind is that airplane image of bodies lying on this plane field. And y- you can search it up. It's called the Johnstown Massacre. Yeah. And there, it's shocking to what extent people are willing to go mm-hmm. to justify their ideology and their belief. And what one person, yeah. this guru sort of figure this cult leader can do and yesterday I was while I was doing the research I found out that he actually recorded a 45 minutes videotape of this ritual it's yeah. happening and in the ritual first they administer the cyanide to kids mm-hmm. and only then did did it to the adults and it was shocking yeah, to listen is. to it have you heard of, have you heard it um I know I don't think I've ever looked at it um but I do know he had like a house that he would stay in in Georgetown, mm-hmm. and it's like literally like where my house is, like mm-hmm. it's opposite. Oh, okay. Like, it's like yeah, so creepy vibes. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend that lives in a house now. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe let's see if we can find some relics. <laughs> so yeah. So this was planned. I think something like this happened. An American congressman came to see to the commune, and while he was leaving, they shot him up. And they knew their time was up. America was going to invade or something. Mm-hmm. And then what happened was he decided to end everything. Mm-hmm. And what I find most disgusting about this is that he sent all his money to the Soviet embassy mm-hmm. and told, like, for the socialist cause, let's help people who are oppressed. All the money that I collected, mm-hmm. use it for that. And I just found how blinded and stupid a person can get yeah. when they're so deep into an ideology. And That's true. It, it was really shocking for me. Well, how do you guys remember that? We, I don't think we even like, like have a day where we think about the Jones Arm Massacre because like, you know, obviously it didn't really affect the Guyanese community that much mm-hmm. because a lot of Guyanese like, you know, we have Guyanese that did pass away and, you know, it was tragic and stuff, but, like, we really don't commemorate today or anything specifically. I think there's, like, the, obviously the place where they just come, they have, like, a, maybe, like, an arc or something to commemorate. Right. You can see, go there and see it, but, like, we don't really think about it <laughs> as much as we sh- we probably should. Uh-huh. But, yeah, because we have so many other things that took place in Ghana, you know, where we had rebellions and riots and stuff that we commemorate, so... Jonestown uh, Massacre is like nothing to us. <laughs> really? Oh, that's interesting. Because for most people from America, the first yeah. thing that comes to their mind when they hear yeah, Georgetown, it's a, it's a I mean, deal. sorry, when they hear Guyana, is the Georgetown Massacre. But it's interesting that, like, it didn't affect the local populace yeah. that much. Even for me, I, I knew about the Georgetown Massacre before anywhere, Guyana, to be honest. <laughs> I just knew they did it somewhere in the Caribbean, South America. I don't know yeah. which country it was, but uh, while I was doing the research, I was like, ah, oh, it's in Guyana. I should ask her about that. <laughs> right. So, in the research notes, I also found um, you have like a really strange mountain. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a plateau, but you guys call it a mountain. Mount Roraima? Yeah. Again, how do I search for it? Mount, it'll just be like R O Mount Roraima we share between um yeah. Venezuela and Brazil so it's like it's in three countries yeah the thing is usually you, well, I imagine a mountain to be like pointy at the top we, or... well we do have those type of mountains so we have it all <laughs> <laughs> but this is super interesting cause... yeah a lot of people come and they climb it and stuff I have yeah. a fear of heights so oh <laughs> But there are waterfalls on it too. Yeah, so that's we have the largest single drop waterfall in the world. Single drop means just like oh, one okay. drop. Oh, okay. So a lot of people come to Ghana for that uh, as well. Is, is it like very deep from the coast? Is it difficult to access this? Particular um, place? it's n- well. Usually, you would have to go. Um, there's like an airstrip. Uh huh. So you take a flight, like a, a small plane, right. which she takes you to there. Ah. Uh, it's because it's from, it's in region eight. Okay. Region eight. Lives in region eight, region seven, one or two regions. Okay, <laughs> that's what happens when you name regions yeah. after numbers. Oh ah. yeah. Okay. Have you been here? I've never been there actually. I, I, this is in region seven, I believe. So uh-huh. I've never been to region seven like that. So you can actually walk on top. Probably, I think so. Wow. Yeah. 
this is this is like really unique in terms of a natural mm-hmm. monument because again I, you, I call this a plateau yeah i wouldn't call this a mountain because mm-hmm. for me mountains are pointy at top yeah <laughs> but it's really interesting yeah, it's really cool that's you know it's in all three like countries yeah as well. brazil venezuela and yeah. Guyana, right it's kind of a border point that's pretty amazing and um you have like a beef with venezuela <laughs> <laughs> that oh my god yeah that's really we've had it's so terrible because venezuelans they go on social media and they create these pages and they claim like an entire half of ghana is theirs yeah that's the thing their yeah. claim is like everything yeah. to the to the so rest of t- a river yeah and that's like entire half of ghana yeah it is and that's where my region my, oh, part, really? of my part of the region yeah. is so they're always fighting they're always fighting with us over that like and every time i meet a venezuelan even here mm-hmm. i'm always like mm. <laughs> <laughs> Because if they bring it up, I'm like, oh my god, I'm not gonna have an argument with you right now. Like, what's their claim? What? Why? Did, what, what? I think it's it's way it's from like decades and decades ago when they first discovered, you know, the whole like South America, like continent. You mean stuff. centuries ago? Yeah, centuries, obviously. Uh. Yeah. So when they first discovered it, like, they obviously they when they were like dividing, however they're dividing the map or whatever they're doing, they claim this part and this part or whatever. So I think like because of that, um. They were saying, oh, we discovered this part first. It should be uh, ours and stuff like that. So did, that's why. But don't they have a lot of shit to deal with? Why do they yeah, want more territory? I, I, always, I always say that. I'm like, you can't even deal with your own country right now. Why do you want the extended <laughs> piece? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Because I was like, usually when there's a land claim, it's like yeah. small, tiny piece of land. But it's like half the country. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's, just, it's just quite, it got quite interesting for me. And... What about the cricket? We need to talk about that because uh-huh. I, being Indian, yeah, I, I should be into cricket, but I see so long you a fuck. Yeah, but, I know. But <laughs> cricket is a super big in Ghana. So let, let, explain me what West Indies is. The West Indies cricket team mm-hmm. because West Indies for yeah for people who don't watch cricket, mm-hmm. it's kind it's kind of strange because different countries are uniting together to play a particular mm-hmm. sport. I think it's very unique. I think West Indies is the only example I have. Maybe like USSR, you can't consider that. You wouldn't consider that to be like a different mm-hmm. country because at that time it was one yeah. single state unit. But West Indies, it's an exception because it's like a lot of sovereign states mm-hmm. decided to form one team to yeah. play a particular sport. Could you explain about that? West Indies. How West Indies came about? Well, because um. The whole name West Indies came from the fact that Christopher Columbus, when he was like disco- discovering, <laughs> in air, air quotes. Um, so I just read he he was like he saw Guyana and it's like I don't want that shit. <laughs> he can ignore Guyana. So we we got the name. We were referred to as West Indians because he thought he was in India mm-hmm. because the original route was supposed to take him to India, India, but he ended up you know being on the other side. So he would call us. West Indians mm-hmm. because we were on the West. Right. So that's how come the whole name came about. So but West you are Indian. West and East Indies. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So that's how the whole name came about. And because, you know, because each of these countries are so small and stuff and we don't have like, we would say all these players from one, you know, one country. That's why they had to come together and like take the best players from each country to right. form that one team. So why does Jamaica compete by itself in the Olympics? If it... I mean, well, like in the Olympics, when it comes to Olympics, like each country has their own like, like Flag. members from like different like areas. So that's why. I mean, cricket, it's not mandatory. I, I'm, I, I'm not sure about cricket. That's what I'm asking. Like, and cricket, like, I don't think it is. So that's why. Oh. So which countries make up the best in this cricket team? <laughs> um, I say, well, Guyana, Jamaica, um, Saint Lu- I think it's like St. Lucia, Trinidad. Uh, St. Kitts and Nevis mm-hmm. so yeah but like like IPL is going on right now mm-hmm. in the Premier League but in, within the Caribbean we have CPL which is the Caribbean the Premier, Premier League. League so that's when we play against each country oh it's, it's country versus country yeah okay so that's where I actually pay attention to cricket oh okay <laughs> so yeah who usually wins? Uh, well it's usually <laughs> Trinidad Trinidad is actually um, backed yeah. by Shuru Khan that's his team Shuru Khan? yeah Shuru Khan yeah. puts money in the Caribbean yeah. League yeah wait so this is not like national cricket associations playing against each other. It's actually supported by a private player. Mm-hmm. It's like a franchise cricket. Oh God, I hate those. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cricket. So it's so, so like it's not like it's not totally like Guyanese players and stuff. They have people from South Africa are gonna come in ah. and stuff like that. So yeah. 
Dude. So that's how it is. But it's still going to be like, oh, Ghana Amazon Warriors. That's our team name. Ghana Amazon Warriors. Trinidad one is Trinbago Knight Riders. Oh, Knight Riders, is, there's an Indian team. I think he's like franchising. That's his, his team as well. Yeah, Kolkata yeah. Knight Kolkata Rider. Knight Riders. Yeah, so. You actually give a fuck about cricket in India, don't you? <laughs> but my, my dad, he's super big on it. Like IPL. Uh, so sometimes I keep up. But CPL is my shit. That's okay. the one I'm going to pay attention to. Uh, and... Uh, okay. From very vague childhood memories uh-huh. of my dad watching cricket mm-hmm. Brian Lara was a legend from yeah, the West Indies he was. which part of West Indies is he from? he's from Jamaica he's from Jamaica yeah another cricket legend that was Guyanese is Shivnaran Chandrapal I heard of he that he was name. like yeah he was one of the best cricketers he's retired now but yeah uh-huh. he's from Guyana yeah he's Guyanese what about oh, what about the, oh, the cool guy Jesus yeah, though, you don't know Chris Shiv- Gill yeah <laughs> he's Jamaican <laughs> he's Jamaican yeah. yeah all the cool people are from Jamaica I'm so sorry <laughs> Yeah, he's Jamaican. So, when do you guys, like, support West Indies? Is it like... Oof. West Indies is always disappointing at cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, they weren't, actually. They were they're quite good in the early 2000s, if I believe. Yeah, I think, yeah, they were. But, like, like you know, recent the past couple of years, they've been, you know, struggling, I guess. Mm-hmm. But we still do support them because, you know, we uh, like to support our own when it comes to those type of things. But, but like, it... if anything, we do be back in India. We do it back in India? Yeah, we back India. For example, when India plays West Indies, you're gonna back India. Well, we have people like that back home. They would back ah. India, like yeah. God, dude, from a, from a football perspective, mm-hmm. you guys are disgusting. <laughs> well, I would say the same thing because honestly, Guyanese people—they're only people that they tend to do that. Because even like in CPL, the Caribbean Premier League, we'd have Guyanese people that would support the Trinidadian team, and then they're like, wow. "Y'all should get deported." <laughs> <laughs> Because you I should would, be part of Venezuela. Yeah, I would. I would like. I would never do that. Like even if West Indies is playing against India, even though I know India is probably gonna beat them, mm-hmm. I would still support West Indies because I know it's my people on that team. Right. But there are people back home that are gonna support India because they know India is gonna win or the Indian is better team, right. obviously. But it sucks still. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Dude, from a football perspective, this makes absolutely no sense mm-hmm. to me. <laughs> well, where I'm from, like in Region Nine, because we're so close to Brazil, we're heavily we're kind of influenced by Brazilian culture a lot. So football is big from where I'm from. Mm. So yeah, oh, that, that's good. And what other sports do you guys like other than football and I mean sorry cricket and football? Well, because those it, th- th- why doesn't baseball get much into there? Because there are some ca- uh, Caribbean islands where mm-hmm. baseball is big, like uh, Dominica Republic mm-hmm. and Cuba. Yeah, well, those are more like those like Spanish countries. I don't think like in the English speaking Caribbean the oh. baseball is popular because it's such like an American sport. Right. So yeah, that's why it's not popular with us. Because it's, it's not anomaly because usually Spanish speaking countries are good in football. Mm-hmm. But Cuba and Dominican Republic they're like we don't play football but we play baseball mm-hmm. which is very American. Yeah. But Cuba is like very anti-American too. Yeah. It's, it's an anomaly yeah, for me. Yeah, we don't, we don't have baseball. I think other sports we have like we have tennis and stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah. We have volleyball and all those type of things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Hey, we got sandy beaches, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really say beaches. Like, Guyanese beaches are totally different from the ones you get from the other Caribbean islands because they have the blue water. Oh, super you, nice. Oh, you guys are like the gray we Atlantic yeah, Ocean. Yeah, the gray Atlantic, so yeah. Oh, God. Okay. And now, like, we don't even have that white sand, like, oh. that the rest of beaches have. Like, if you see, like, a white sand beach, it's because they put that sand there. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why Columbus was like, man, <laughs> I ain't chilling here. <laughs> But that's 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 very interesting. Ah, another fact. You're the only country in South America where homosexuality is illegal. Really? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that, that's what the yeah, article told well, me. Um, what, what would you attribute that to? Well, not you, not you bring it up. Because we're, we've heavily influenced by, you know, the church. Mm-hmm. So Angelican that's, church. Yeah, so that's why it's so... Like, a lot of schools too as well in, mm-hmm. in Ghana... They're so like Christian oriented, like mm. so we have to say a prayer in the morning. Mm. You know, some schools like the school that I went to, we like every beginning of the semester they would take us to church, ah. regardless of your religion. They take you to church. Are, are you religious? Well, yeah. Uh, which side? <laughs> <laughs> which team do you support? Well, my my family were Christian. Like my mom, but she came like her dad was Muslim, okay, and my grandmother was Hindu. But, like, when they got married, they didn't really care that much. Uh-huh. So, they sent my, my, my mom and my aunt to, like, Sunday school and stuff. So oh. Eventually, as they got older, they all converted to Christianity. Okay. My parents would, like, bring us up in church and stuff. Like uh, so, you're Christian? Yeah. Okay. 
it, it's a it's so strange because it, when in in Indian context, mm-hmm. like interreligious marriage, mm-hmm. is still kind of not very common. Yeah. But in your case, you've been telling you have an uncle who's Christian. Mm-hmm. Your dad was Muslim. Yeah. No, a great granddad yeah. was Muslim. And then mm-hmm. you're Christian. It's kind of strange that. Yeah. It's kind of strange and really interesting too that the religion mm-hmm. religious interplay is so normalized. Yeah. In Guyana, especially among the Indian community, mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, I think with the because I mean, obviously we're so you know because the church still influences us. That's why they haven't you know mm. really been able to legalize that because a lot of people, especially the church, would protest against it. It's right. not like we don't have gay people. We right. do obviously, right. but you know it's gonna cause a lot of riots and stuff like that. Oh, what's the Indian communities like? What's the Hindu communities? perspective towards homosexuality in um, Guyana has this you know in India we are not kind of pro- not protective you know exposed to that mm-hmm. uh, culturally or through the media mm-hmm. very much until the past few mm-hmm. past decade but when you're from a more open more um, how do you say sexually expressive cultures like mm-hmm. Latin America and the Caribbean mm-hmm. how does that change the perspective well, of the well people? we um Obviously, because we have like we we obviously heavily influenced by Western culture and like media because we that's that's what we have. Right. Um, people, like they come out and stuff, they can express themselves. But Guyanese people, especially like men, mm-hmm. they really like take it up a notch when it comes to bullying or like you know really like discriminating against gay people. So a lot of times they have to hide that so they can feel protected. Right. But then there are some people that are super bold and, you know, they don't care. They just flaunt it. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they don't give a damn. But they can still be in a lot of, like, trouble because if somebody is to, like, hit them or anything or oh. attack them for being gay, right. it can cause a serious problem. And they're not protected by the law. Yeah. So. Wow. And is, is there any specific idiosyncrasies of the Indian community towards this topic, um, towards this attitude, compared to the uh, Africans and the Amerindians. No, I yeah. think, like, everybody, they have that one mindset when it comes to the whole, you know... Is it? Yeah. Even if you're not Christian? Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. That, you, kind of, you can say kind of the same in India, mm-hmm. too. Religion doesn't play a very big part. It's kind yeah. of how liberal you are, how conservative you are, but... In this particular aspect, you're saying Ghana's more towards the conservative yeah. side of the spectrum. That's that's pretty interesting. And how do you think the oil is going to change everything? The discovery of the oil? Well, um, well, honestly, it really has to do with how our government, you know, really sets the standards for, you know, how they're going to manage this oil because obviously the oil sector is a huge deal. Yeah. And if they mess it up, it can cause a lot of problems. We can end up like we can end up like Venezuela because they had oil oh, as well, this. or like countries in the Middle East. Right. And we can't risk that type of like being bombed. <laughs> <laughs> so being bombed for they, oil. They really have to know what they're doing, and this this obviously like it worries me a lot because obviously I mean besides the fact that I have family and friends living there and stuff like that, like it's my country, and I don't want to see it go down the drain because right. of something like that because you made a bad deal. It, it's a you know? threat, and every time I like. And the thing is, when I tell people here, oh, Ghana has oil now, they look at me like, oh, well, you're, you, that's great once you don't get involved with the U.S. And I'm there like, oh, my God, <laughs> you're already involved. <laughs> How? Because How Exxon, you... Exxon Mobil is what the people that are like managing are all right now. They're, so. they're refining. So, so, so they, they buy it from you and sell it to the United States. Or yeah, basically. But like I'm because the last the opposition that was in power the last time, they made a really bad deal with it where we want to benefit that much from mm. like the oil so right now i think the cover the current government is trying to like fix that contract so that everybody kind of benefits and stuff right but i really hope they play it out really well because sometimes they can get this to their heads and you know it can go downhill damn because in, in a way it's kind of a positive thing where you have a res- resource which is very mm-hmm. valuable and exporting it can mm-hmm. only help your country like the Middle Eastern countries yeah. have done but mm-hmm. you can also send like we've had people from the Middle East from Dubai the the prince one of the princes visited actually mm. to like give advice on stuff how to manage because obviously we want advice from them they know how to manage yeah. oil you know 
So yeah, we've been taking advice from those countries as well. So we're just gonna have to see because we recently, I mean, obviously, they recently got into government. So we just have to see how they how do they next next five years because next election next elections is in like four years. Right. So yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. And one other thing I noticed is like Rihanna, mm-hmm. her mom's from. Rihanna? Yes, her oh. mom is from Rihanna. So we do we claim her guys. Yeah, yeah, you guys you guys get to claim Rihanna. Yeah, right? so yeah. But she's born in Barbados. Ah. Mm. So she's more towards that side. Yeah. Also we have another big Guyanese in the film industry is Shuri. The one the Letitia Wright, she plays Shuri in Black Panther, which is Black Panther's sister. Ah. Yeah, she's Guyanese. She was Leticia, born in Ghana. Oh, what's her name? Letitia? It's L E T. Okay. That's really L E T L E T. Letitia. L E T I T I A, I think. Letitia. Oi, what's wrong L- with the spelling? No, L E T I T I A. Uh-huh. L E T I T. So like it's a T before the A. T I A. Yeah, so Letitia, right? Letitia. She's Guyanese. Ah uh, yeah. So yeah, she uh-huh. she's Guyanese as well as um Play, I think this is English. She's got a really good English accent. Yeah, because she she was like she loved Ghana really young and she ah. grew up in like England. Oh, ah, okay. So that's why. Ah. So as well as I don't even know about Saint John, but his he had a remix. Saint John. Yeah, he's a singer okay. like an artist. So he had this remix of this song called Roses that went like viral like on TikTok and stuff. So mm-hmm. he's also Guyanese as well. Mm. So yeah, there are a lot of people like in the like film industry and stuff that are have Guyanese Half that have Guyanese. Guyanese parents and Guyanese roots and stuff. Any any Indian of anyone of Indian origin that would be. Uh, well, recently, um, there's a show on Netflix that came out called Ginny and Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you've ever heard of it, but like it, because it recently came out, but mm-hmm. there are two siblings on the show that are both Guyanese. Ginny and Georgia. Yeah. Ginny. Ginny. Yeah. G I, G I. And Georgia. Like Georgia, the state? And Gina. Oh, Gina. Yeah. So those are like the main characters. The 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 Indian guy, the yes. Guyanese, his name is Joe on the show. Oh. He's here. Oh, that's that's an Indian dude? Yeah. Okay. Are you so, Guyanese? Yeah, his parents are Guyanese. And his sister also plays a role as well. Ah. Or, I don't know if you're going to find her because she's not like a main character. Ah, okay. But yeah. Is, is this her? Yeah, that's her. Ah. Yeah, they're both of Guyanese ancestry. Ah, yeah, they look Indian. <laughs> Dude, these are cool. So, and you know Bridgerton? Bridgerton, yeah. Right, yeah. The 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 person that plays the queen, Charlotte, uh-huh. she has Guyanese ancestry as well. But she's British. Yeah, I think she like I think she I believe she was I think she was born, born. again and then she left uh-huh. really young. Wow. Like, right, so yeah. Dude, these are cool. And you, I don't know, like I thought. All brown people were from the Indian subcontinent, <laughs> but there might be brown people from the Caribbean too. Yeah. Right? In Hollywood. Mm-hmm. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And what would you like to, you know, characterize your relationship with India as a country? Because, how do you say, it? You, it, one YouTube channel described Ghana as India's long lost sister or <laughs> long lost child. Mm-hmm. How do you guys characterize your relationship with India, the country, and the people? I feel... Well, sometimes we do refer to India... Like, a lot of Indians would be like, oh, that's a motherland mm-hmm. and stuff. You know, that's where we came from, obviously, because we're so heavily influenced by your culture and stuff like that. But I think how we would look at India is that... Um, I won't say, like, a sister or brother, like mm-hmm. a distant cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping a distance here. <laughs> like, a, like a cousin, in a way, you know, because... Because even though we have those same, like, culture or whatever, you know, we still, there's something different about it. We made it our own. We right. took whatever you guys gave to us and we transformed it into our own. We made it something for ourselves. So, right. yeah. <laughs> Got this in cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Just in cousin. Yeah. And from an Indian perspective, like, once you start to learn about Guyana, it's mm-hmm. really fascinating. Mm-hmm. Like, how Indian people were able to go there and kind of make, make yeah. it your own, which is really interesting and i'm i'm learning more about it right now and it's been really really <laughs> fun so would you like to say anything else to the audience before we conclude i think that's pretty much i think we sum up everything to be honest we covered everything i think it's a music maybe okay what do you like to talk about music 
I mean, I mean, Ghana, we listen to like everything, mm-hmm. but we're like, obviously we have music that's deeply, you know, in Caribbean, like Caribbean roots. So mm-hmm. that's reggae, dance, mm-hmm. all soca, stuff like that. So... And how did the Indian music... Did the Indian so music we have like that? this, we have this genre of music that's like Indian influence that we call chutney. Chutney? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I know like, there's like an Indian like sauce or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but chutney they call music. it chutney music. Chutney music. <laughs> oh my God, it's the funniest, funniest thing because it ha- does have like some like, um, Hindu words like I don't know, like Indian words in it. Okay, so, uh, give me a song. Oh my god, I don't even listen to Chutney. <laughs> but it gets it's so it's so insane. It's so insane. <laughs> okay, I, need, to, I can't. I need to listen to this. Chutney music. They didn't like show you any examples. These Damn. things. And you know. Oh, Ravi B. Barman. Okay, listen. Go to oh, go to Ravi B. I think Ravi B is super like popular. Ravi B. <laughs> Like an Indian guy, I um, guess you can go to like his um. YouTube. Yeah, you can go to YouTube for him. Oh. I'm I'm not gonna play ads on my podcast if they're not playing me. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's like there's some. I don't think this is one of his best songs. <laughs> me neither. Um, but like it's like it's like English, but some some like parts they're gonna involve like that kind of like Creolese. Uh huh. So like it mixes in with it as well. And what's and the Indian there, element in it? There are some songs that like when they sing, I have no idea what they're saying, but I just know it's because like we call it like I I Google this mm-hmm. and they say we have like Guyanese Hindustani, like Hindustani like terminology. So like you mean as a language? Like, yeah, like as a language. Okay. So like in Trinidad, because most of these singers are Trinidadian. Oh, they they're not Guyanese. No, these are not Guyanese people. These are Trinidadians. Ah. They're like more popular with the Chatty music oh. like, than us. Um, so a lot of their songs have that like, would say like Trinidadian Hindustani, I guess you could say. So, so Hindustani, you mean like, like Indian languages, yeah. but they're not Creole, but they're more to the Indian language yeah. side. Wow. That's pretty interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure no one in India has a clue about any of this. And I hope this solves that. I hope, like, when people <laughs> listen to this, they're like, oh, shit, they're brown people in the Caribbean. <laughs> they're like chutney. Chutney music is such a cute name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it kind of means the same. Chutney is like a mix of so many different spices yeah. and coconut, how we make so it. So that's the same. That's the same, yeah. Chutney actually makes sense. Well, yeah. Anything else before we conclude? Rayana. I think that's about it. I think that's about it too. I went through all my points from the research. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's about it. So I want to thank you so much for spending the time. It was no problem. And it was a pleasure talking to you. You too. My distant Indian cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, I hope that we get to, like more people get to know about Guyana mm-hmm. and the, especially for the Indian audience, the mm-hmm. connection that we have with this Caribbean country and why it's so cool and what we can learn from them. And how we can consider them not to be less Indian because <laughs> they're a different country. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it. Well, thank you so much, Rihanna. It's great being here. Yeah. And with that, we end the 14th episode. Jesus, 14 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of that. Well, see you next time. <laughs>